What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about why I think prisons and jails are sexist or unfair towards women. Now I do not make this lightly and I am not the kind of person that starts shouting about things that I think is unfair or sexist. I don't do that often. So I do not take this lightly and I've thought long and hard about the things that I have written down on this list. A little my little don't forget list. I've thought about it a lot. And while some are kind of nitpicking and don't matter, there are other ones that are very serious. And I'm going to break all of that down for you guys today. I'm also not only gonna be talking about inmates, but I'm going to be talking about visitors in prison as well. And keep in mind, this is my own personal experience, my own personal thoughts and feelings. And it is the hope that I can create some content that gets the conversation going, content that cre can create change, content that can have an impact on how even if it's just a few people, on how just a few people view prison. And it is my hope that one day I'll be able to be part of the conversation of change. Prison reform is something that we desperately need in this country. I have made a prison reform video and I kind of just talked about what ideas I have for prison reform. I will leave that video on the card up here. I highly recommend you go watch that one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. about is something that I have mentioned before on my channel and that is medical care for women specifically. Men and women have different needs. We have different bodies, our bodies do different things, so we need different care. Keep in mind I have friends in male facilities, I have men that have been in and out of prison or that are currently in prison as well as women that have been in prison in different states and while comparing notes, this is just the overall standard in prison and jails. Women are often told that they are hypochondriacs, lying, being dramatic, they're not really in pain, they don't really need medical care, sit down, shut up, do your time, you don't really need us, stop asking for the nurse, you're fine. And there is a term for that, I can't even pronounce it so I'm not gonna try because I'm gonna get 200 comments on how I said the word wrong, but Correctional officers have a very difficult job, and while some inmates may exaggerate symptoms or even fake symptoms, there are so many people being neglected because correctional officers, more often than not, in my personal experience, think everyone is lying and they do not attend to those inmates as they should. But in that same breath, correctional officers are overburdened, overworked, exhausted, dealing with a million different uh, inmates with tons of different issues, and it is not always the fault of the correctional officer. We have a major system problem, major system failures right now. We are just locking up as many people as we can for different reasons, of course. And there is private prisons versus state prisons, and I can make an entire video on that. If you want me to, just let me know. You guys always say yes to that, but I can make that video as well. But this is not solely the responsibility or the fault of the correctional officers. While I think some can do a much better job than they are doing, I think it's an overall system problem. When we house hundreds of thousands of people in facilities and these facilities are overcrowded and understaffed, that's a problem that we have created. That's our system failing everyone. We're failing the correctional officers and we're failing the inmates. So let's just get back to medical care. Women are so ignored. Women have been notoriously ignored when it comes to medical needs. Now, my daughter was born while I was in prison. I was left alone in active labor for almost four hours in pain crying alone, terrified, while people walked past me like I wasn't in labor. I had to sit straight up in a wheelchair by myself in medical and no one cared, no one blinked an eye. They just ignored me and I'm in, I'm in pain, I'm in labor. I felt like my back was breaking and I was completely ignored and alone. Women have been left alone to give birth in jail cells because correctional officers will walk by a very pregnant woman and say, oh, you're faking it. You're not in labor, you just wanna get out. When it's like, you should probably believe her because she's very, very, very pregnant and you can tell if a woman is in labor. Um, you can usually tell by her yells, screams, and cries because child childbirth is the worst pain a human body can endure. You can usually tell if she's faking it. 
So, you know, jot that down. Um, it is so inhumane to force women to give birth alone in dirty jail cells. We've seen that. Now, that is not talked about enough, but it has to be talked about here. It's just so wrong. Now, for everyone that clicked on this video to tell me that if you don't like conditions in prison, don't go, let me just give you some examples of how easy it is to go to prison, okay? So, have you ever had a couple of drinks at a restaurant with your friends and then drove home? That drive could have changed your entire life because God forbid, and I hope this never happens to any of you, you get in a car accident and someone dies. If you have alcohol in your system, that's manslaughter and you will go to prison. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't drink, that would never happen to me. Do you have a cell phone? What if you checked a text and you looked down at your phone and you ran into someone and they died? That is also manslaughter. And for everyone that's like, I would never do that. You text and drive. You've texted and drove before. Don't say you haven't done it. We've all checked a text while we were driving, myself included. And that is a constant thing I try my absolute best not to do is to even look at my phone if it dings and it goes off. I try my best to ignore it when I'm driving. But I've had to like be aware of my phone addiction and curb my phone addiction, but that's not what this video is about. So back on topic. Just since we are already talking about medical care, let's talk about feminine hygiene. I get this comment every day from women. I have to pay for tampons in the free world. She should have to pay for tampons in jail. Now, that argument is only valid if inmates, if female inmates are given employment in jail so they can somehow pay for their own. There's no opportunity to have a job to pay for your own feminine hygiene products. You would never tell a man he can't have toilet paper to wipe his butthole, okay? So why are you telling women she can't have a pad or a tampon? Just leave that there. Also, men are allowed to buy underwear on commissary. They're allowed to buy boxers. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but women are not allowed to buy underwear in county jails. And if I remember correctly, I don't think I ever remember seeing underwear on a commissary list in prison. We could buy bras in prison, like sports bras that had more support, but I've never seen underwear on a prison or county jail commissary list. We couldn't even buy them. And a lot of county jails don't even give you underwear, but then they give you a pad or two a day. What am I supposed to do with that? What do you do? What do you do? I have seen women bleeding all over themselves and almost every day I get a comment, a prison would never do that. They would never let a woman bleed alone in a jail cell. You're wrong, you're wrong. Yes, they let that happen. Yes, they do that. Yes, women are sitting and bleeding alone in jail cells. They're not offered clean clothes or, or any way to clean themselves up for hours, even all night long into the day shift. I've seen that happen more times than I can even count. And a lot of people are often shocked when they hear this and it's just the freaking truth of it, you guys. I have been in jail. I have seen hundreds of women in my lifetime coming in and out of jail that thought they would never end up in jail, that were mortified, that were completely shocked by the conditions in which women are forced to live, okay? So again, feminine hygiene needs to be at the top of the priority list in facilities that hold women. It is not just a cleanliness issue. It is a health and safety issue. Blood is blood. Let's move on. I know I've talked about this many times. I mean, I understand prison should not be a luxury hotel, but I'm not asking for a Tempur-Pedic mattress, bro. I'm asking for underwear and tampons. Okay. That would be dope. If a facility is at maximum capacity for women, they should not take any more women or they need to open space for the women. Now, a lot of you are like, well, what do you mean they can't take the women? Like, if a woman, if these women are getting arrested, they need to be housed somewhere. They either need to be transferred to a facility that can accommodate them, and I'll explain that in a second, or they can't go there. So a lot of county jails have five, six pods for men and one pod for women. A lot of them do, not every facility, but a lot of them do. Now, I 
I know there are more men than women in jail, but if you can't hold them, you should not accept them. They need to go to a facility that can house them. So this is what I mean. A lot of times you will see four women in a two person cell. A lot of jails have to offer boats like cots, but some don't. Some just shove four women in a two person cell. And I think that is just like my anxiety gets crazy when I think about having to go through that myself. I have been in cells that are only supposed to accommodate two people and four of us are in there and it is just so awful. Imagine being squeezed in a half bathroom with four, with three other people. You feel anxious. You feel anxious, especially if it's been a day or two and you can't leave. Lock yourself in your half bathroom for 24 hours with three of your friends and see if you're like mentally stable after that because you're gonna go crazy. Another way that women are treated unfairly compared to the men, women are often belittled, talked down to, mentally and verbally abused, and written up for the tiniest things. Men in the Grimes unit in Arkansas were allowed to openly talk in the halls. It's loud, it's chaotic. And I know this because officers that were transferred from Grimes to McPherson would tell us all the time. I had friends that I would ask and I'm like, yo, can you talk in the halls or like, do you have to be quiet? And they'd be like, no, everyone's talking in the halls. This seems small, I just want to put this in here. Women are screamed at. If there is a whisper in the halls, you will go to segregation. If there's a giggle, if there's a laugh, if there is any kind of talking in the halls, you're gonna get written up. And that kind of just leads me into another thing. Women are written up for the smallest infractions and private prisons do this in order to keep you there. They want to house you longer. They want to write you up so that it looks on paper like you've been a bad inmate and they can keep you because prisons profit off how many bodies they have in that facility if it's a private for-profit prison, of course. Women also get longer seg times for non-violent reasons. So women get long stretches in segregation for fighting. And now a really, a really good example of this is my friend Jason, who I talk about a lot on this channel, he served 15 days for beating someone up in the day room. Beating someone up. Dude did 15 days in seg. I beat up a sex offender and I did 90 days and was kicked out of a medium security and sent back to the max. Just wanna throw that in there. Women get longer times in segregation. Now that is an apples to apples comparison. He got into a fight in the day room, he got 15 days. I got into a fight in the bathroom that was off camera that no one saw, I got pepper sprayed and I got locked up for 90 days and transferred. That's an apples to apples com comparison. Now, a lot of women get written up for tiny things like giving a soup, that's called trafficking and trading and you cannot share and you will go to segregation for that if it happens more than once. Those are minor disciplinaries. So at first, trafficking and trading, you can just get loss of good time, but if you keep doing it, then they can send you to seg for that if they want to. So, microwaves, you guys, I've talked about this before, and yes, it's a very minor thing. I have never had a microwave in prison, jail, ever, never. And yes, that is a luxury thing. I just want to put it in here so that you guys see. I have plenty of friends that have been in all kinds of facilities, state, federal, Mexico. <laughs> um, Every man I've ever talked to, been friends with, that has been to prison, had microwaves in their unit. So I've never seen one ever in my life, in prison. I wanna talk a little bit more about correctional officers bullying female inmates. I've seen correctional officers take away items that they consider contraband. And this is where women are just really scrutinized in prison. So I have seen correctional officers taking away pictures of women's family members, their kids, they have taken away the pictures. I've seen correctional officers taking away tools that mental health would give females to reduce self-harm, tools like rubber bands. I have seen correctional officers say, this is contraband. And even though inmates do have like a prescription kind of for the rubber band, officers would still take them away. And that was so cruel to me because that woman is hurting. She is hurting. You have no idea what she's going through. And she finally was given a tool that can help reduce self-harm and you took it away from her. So cruel. If women are caught making homemade tampons from the pads that correctional officers give us, they will also take those away because that is contraband. We took a pad, we made it a tampon, contraband. But when you only give out two pads per day per inmate, it's not enough. It is not enough and we need to somehow not bleed all over the place. So yeah. 
I wanna briefly mention sexual assault in prison because it happens. Women are sexually objectified. Women are watched in the shower by men. Women are patted down by men. And when I have said this, other women have gotten really upset at me because they assume that I'm lying or they think that, oh my God, a man would never pat down a woman in prison, you're crazy. I have been pat down by men almost every day when I was serving time in Wrightsville and in McPherson. Men patted me down. That is so disturbing, especially considering there is a large number of women that are victims of sexual assault, trauma, um, abuse by men. And when a man is patting you down, I have seen women crying while they're being patted down by a man because they are just having to relive that trauma. Even the yelling at inmates, screaming at female inmates that have been victims of abuse. A lot of these women have endured abuse their entire lives. Some of these women had PTSD from their childhood, from being yelled at, from being screamed at, from being beat. And you're putting them in these facilities where they're being screamed at and yelled at and belittled on a daily basis, patted down by men, men watch them shower. And it's just not right. It's not right. We are causing more problems. We are ca causing more harm than good. And over 60% of inmates leave prison with PTSD. I really wanna talk about how female inmates seduce officers. And I wanna put this in here because it happens where women will flirt with a guard, seduce an officer, have a sexual relationship with a guard in order to get the things that she thinks she needs. I want to put this in here just to get the conversation going. Is it her fault for doing that? Or is this a system failure? We're not providing what she needs and she feels as though she has to do whatever it is that she is doing to get things like pads and tampons, extra toilet paper, extra food. When people are not focused on rehabilitation, but they're focused on their most basic needs, hygiene products, feminine hygiene products, food, when they're focused on getting those things, their rehabilitation is way down on that list and we need to change that narrative. It is unacceptable for people to act that way, but at the same time, they think they need to act that way to get the things that they feel as though they need. Things that will make their time easier, better, or cleaner. The system has failed women over and over and over again. Another example that prisons are unfair is a lot of men get work detail that women do not. And it's not that women can't perform those tasks, it's that those job details are special and they're coveted, so men get them first. An example of that would be painting or classes that teach electrical work. For some reason, women are not offered that, but men are. A woman can be an electrician. I mean, not me, because I would completely zap myself and burn the place down, but like other women could absolutely do those jobs. So that is just a task that is given to the men when there are so many women that would love the chance for extra work detail. The last thing that I'm going to say is about the visitors that go to prisons. Now I know Ro Clausen touched on this a little bit because she is married to an inmate that is serving life. His name is Adam. I have a video with her on my channel and she also has a whole channel about Adam. So definitely go check that out. But she told a story about how a girl that was 12 years old went to a prison to visit her father and the correctional officer stripped her naked and strip searched her. A 12 year old girl. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a correctional officer or a law enforcement officer. I don't care if you're the freaking Pope. My daughter is never going to get strip searched, ever. I would have thrown a heinous fit. I would have had a Naomi Campbell level meltdown, okay? And the person, there's a whole story behind that, so definitely go check out Rose channel for that. But that is so gross and inhumane and wrong. That is sexual abuse. I don't care what you say, but I have seen women get turned around, which means they can't come into the facility because they're bigger and they have boobs. And I've seen women not even having like a V-neck on, showing no cleavage. I'm showing no cleavage right now because we're not all a size freaking two and some women have bigger boobs they've been turned away. It just makes me so mad. While I know that you're supposed to dress appropriately for visits, I have seen people turned away for the dumbest reasons, like just having more boobs. I guess that is all of the examples that I had. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, and I just want you guys to keep in mind, this is my personal experience, this is my personal opinion. I feel like it should be equal, and women should get better care in prison. 
You don't wanna give a woman a microwave in prison, cool, but you need to take care of them medically. You need to make sure that they are okay mentally, and we need a complete system overhaul at this point. Prison was designed to keep society safe from our most dangerous, from serial killers, from murderers, from rapists. That is what prison was designed for. But right now, prisons have become modern day mental hospitals. I understand why prison reform isn't important to so many people, but it should be important to you for the simple fact that it is hurting our society. Your tax dollars are being used to abuse people. Those correctional officers are exhausted. Correctional officer fatigue is a real thing. Those officers, while some are awful, some are just trying their absolute best to make some kind of a difference. And they can't do that in the system that they're working in because that system is disgusting. It is a system of abuse and it is a system that is set up to make people fail. I'm gonna end today's video here. I really hope you guys took something from this video. I hope you guys saw my point of view. I would love to hear your point of view as well in the comment section down below. Stay safe, stay sober, do not break the law, and I will see you guys in my next one.